Aisha Irby. Irby made that one. Ties it up at two. Uh, Tiffany Nichols. Okay, we'll put is, that down. Is number 23 listed 21 in our guide? All right, that's. But we'll double check. That. She is listed as 21. And she has the ball right now. Ball game's tied up at two. They work it around, go in the corner with it. Jumper from there is good, and that was uh, Sherban. Four to two, and by the way, Sherban's number was listed as three. She is two. If you are following numbers, here's the drive to the right side. Sabrina Rodriguez, and there was a bump on the play and a foul. That's going to be a hostos foul with the uh, Caymans up on the scoreboard, four to two. Caymans, of course, come from the Bronx, right off Grand Concourse. Nice school uh, over near Yankee Stadium in that area. Comes out on the wing to Latasha Harris. Harris passes it. They go in the corner. Jacqueline Torres with it. Yeah, formerly with the face mask, took it off. Joe. Took it off. Got a good look, but shot it a little bit off and misdirected and went out of bounds. So it is Hostos ball. Hostos will come out of the backcourt. Here's Jacqueline Awasika. She's the other fine player on this team, Sean Awasika. Starts a little stutter dribble, throws it in the corner. Awasika has it again. Nice pass to Sherban. And fouled on the play by Torres. And right on cue, Awasika, who can really pass the ball, picked out her teammate, got her an excellent opportunity. And with the Hostos came on top four to two, go to the line. This Hostos team has had several coaches over the years, but if you look down the history of the community college women's ranks in CUNY, first one is good by Sherban. Five to two. She has all five points, in fact. The dominant team in the early going of the community college ranks of the CUNY was the uh, Borough of Manhattan ladies. They dominated. They would win tournament finals by uh, like 80 to 24. I, I looked it up the other night because they were playing Kingsboro in one final shot. Kingsboro scored five points against them in the final. I think that was 2,000. Ball goes in the corner. They come out. They throw it in the corner. It's not that Kingsboro was that bad, although they weren't good. It was just that they were so good, BMCC. Here's the miss by Latasha Harris. Then she gets to the loose ball. They get it outside to Torres. Torres fires. No good. Rebound comes all the way down to the baseline, and gobbling it up was Awasika. So anyway, Rodney Carr was the coach over there at the Borough of Manhattan, just outside the World Trade Center. The, 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 you know, the situation there, you know what happened. It devastated the area. But anyway, when he was in the heyday with that team, they were dominating in the community college ranks. And then Hostos instituted their women's program. They didn't have a women's program or a men's program, in fact. And they started taking over. And they did for like four seasons. Ball in the backcourt. Hosto scrambles. They have the ball. It's good hustle. And Awasika has it coming out of the backcourt. They're leading at 6-2. There's a pitch and a steal right out of the air by Sabrina Rodriguez. Good catch. Nice. And then she comes in and scores. Sabrina read that pass and just picked it right out of her hands. 6-4. Nice hesitation and transition there to throw the defender off and then glides right in for the two. Press is on, but Hostos breaks it and they give it to the ball handler, Awasika, who back passes it. Nichols has it. They're trying to work it down low. They say jump ball. Referee Glazer says uh, jump ball, and that means it is swing for a ball. So let me finish with what I was saying. That Hostos takes over. And they dominate the conference uh, for four years. And you know what? Rodney Carr goes over to Hostos, and he wins a title there at Hostos. <laughs> and then they had three different coaches in that span. So they were dominant, and now they've lost that dominance, and now they're trying to get back in the title game. Ball comes down low. Here's Latham. Goes in the corner. Jump shot from there. No good. It was missed by Latasha Harris. Ball all the way to the sideline. They say Queensboro ball. So you know what now? The Lady Tigers are the dominant team. They've won four in a row. Funny how these things go. Latham with the ball. They send it on the corner. 
catching it as Sabrina Rodriguez starts to drive and she had it knocked away. Rodriguez will throw in from underneath. But on a whole, the community college, and of course these girls play regional games, they're ranked regionally, and that's really important to them. Beyond the CUNY, comes outside to Latonka Harris. The community college ranks in the CUNY is much more competitive on the women's side now. Put in the hands of Jacqueline Torres and they lose the ball and Hostos comes up with it. Nichols has it. Awasika. They pass it on the corner. This is uh, Diasher Webster. And they give it away, Hostos. Very sloppy basketball right now. Hostos leading at 6-4, 13-19 to go first half. Joe Massey, Sean Couch with you. On the left wing is Sabrina Rodriguez. She whirls it cross court to Jacqueline Torres, who is playing without the mask on, as we said. Latasha Harris going to the bucket. Latasha gets resistance. The hostess lady player goes down and gets called for the foul. Yeah, that was a hard foul right there by Yuli Rodriguez, making sure there was no layup happening for Latasha. A truly hard foul Yuli by Yuli. Rodriguez. And that will send Latasha Harris to the free throw line. Latasha's a crafty player. She Harris. understands the nuances of the game. Little shot fake, ball fakes, the slip and slide in that lane and draw fouls. And her free throw is off the front rim. No good. And that's the kind of player Queensboro has been getting to lead things on the court. Of course, we've seen several players take that role. Um, much more talented squad than they used to be. But... Even in the days when they weren't winning, as Harris hits her second, there were some very talented players came through the Lady Tigers ranks. One of them ended up at Queens College. I covered her for two years. Big center, and she was very good. Comes around on the left wing. Here's a jumper. Good. That was, that was nice by Awasika, and they give her a three on that. Nine to five. Her name was Kiki Dunstan. Ball goes into the corner, a whip pass that is whirled away by Kavana Jean Lewis. And Jean Lewis had the ball stripped away and it stays with Queensboro underneath. We've been seeing a lot of St. Louis's and Lewis's and on our telecast so far. Here's a jumper outside Torres, no good. Rebound back tap and Awasika takes it with 12.34 to go. Let me fill in that statement a little bit. We're going to do a Brooklyn York game on Wednesday. We're going to have two St. Louis's playing in the game. Here we have a Lewis. They go on the right wing to Awasika. Awasika deep outside, drives to the baseline, floats one with the right hand offside rim. No good. Sean, maybe she floated that from a little too far out. 9-5. Rodriguez all the way down to the baseline, and Sabrina Rodriguez had somebody step in front of her, but she kept going, and the foul is going to be ticketed to the Hostos player. Foul is on number 33, John Webster, Webster, who got knocked over in transit. That is the 13th foul on Hostos. Queensboro has one. Queensboro down by four. Jumper, no good from the corner by Kavana Jean Lewis. Rebound, though. Harris, no. She battles again, and they pull it off to get it back outside. Rodriguez takes it to the hoop. Too hard on her driving shot. They get to it again. So the uh, Lady Tigers pounding the glass, although they can't get anything to go. And then a steal attempt made by Nichols moving in on Harris, and Harris committed the foul trying to keep her away from the ball. So Tiffany Nichols had a steal, and they give the possession over to Hostos on the foul. And here comes Hostos in the front court. It's still 9-5 on the board. Very low scoring first half, 11-28 to go. They work it into that low pinch post. Yuli Rodriguez was able to fall away and get the basket. Yeah, Yuli looking very fundamental in that move. Squares her shoulders, rips it nice and high to get her balance, and puts a nice, soft arc all net. 11 to 5. Here's Kavana Jean Lewis, the girl who was in her first season here, drove and overshot the basket. 
Hostos has it again, and Nichols brings it up. Nichols very much in control right now. She passes it quickly in the lane. They get Rodriguez, who's gotten to work. Rodriguez got knocked down on the drive, and they get another foul out of it. And Rodriguez will go to the free throw line. Foul was on Latham. And Hostos has looked a little sharper over the last uh, two, three minutes. Here's uh, Yuli Rodriguez, who will go to the line. She's from Palisades Park High School, Palisades, New Jersey. There is no longer a roller coaster there, but there's still a Palisades High School. Believe me. Yeah, that's a good league over there. Cliffside High, high School over there. Right strong, over the bridge. Right over the bridge. Strong girls basketball league in Jersey. There's a famous diner right over the bridge that everybody must have visited one time if you had gone to Palisades Park. Right. Not giving anybody free advertising, but it's 11 to 5. And Hostos is executing, Joe. Uh, 10 minutes and 54 seconds to go in this game, up 11-5. Uh, really taking control of the tempo of the game. Doing a decent job boxing out on the boards, but their shot selection has been a whole lot better right now than the Queensboro Lady Tigers. Right now, Bob DiNardo has uh, the ear of the official, and he is uh, making a point about something, or who knows, maybe they're talking about who's going to win tomorrow's game, Giants and Patriots. Everybody else is. Here's <laughs> Yuli Rodriguez at the line. First one, no good. You have any pick on this game? I'm a Giants team? fan, Joe. You got to go with the blue then. Drew, then. I, I believe in Eli Manning. Okay. Here's the second one, no good. Rebound grabbed in by the Tigers. I'm glad to hear you are, I really am. Yeah, I love Eli. 10.50 to go. I loved Eli when he was throwing all those interceptions last year. All right, here's the girl with a, here's the little girl with a lot of heart, Elsie Landry in the game, number 31. She's working down low as the ball is outside with uh, Gene Lewis. And here is Landry with the ball. She took steps. Took steps and a traveling is called, so it'll go over to Hostos and a mistake, which uh, we told you Queensboro cannot afford this afternoon. They made a little too many of them in the poor shot selection, and that's allowed Hostos to take a six-point lead. Nichols with it. Nichols to Awasika. Awasika on the drive, floats it up, no good. Rebound positioning by Webster to pull it off, gets it back to Sherban. No, Awasika, good. Now you he heard she can hit the glass, uh, our secret. At least she'll get herself in the proper position and pick off rebounds, and she did there. Our secret averaging double-figure rebounding for the year wow. from the point guard position, Joe. That's Very pretty impressive. Player. Yeah. 13 to five, and uh, land. Uh, the shot is missed by Landry. He had a little jumper left of the key, and Hostos ends up with it again. And the last few trips, one and out for the Lady Tigers also. Working on the left to Awasika. Awasika left of the key at the angle on the left of the lane. No good. Rebound pulled off, though. Flip back outside by Webster. In the Yuli Rodriguez, who's done a lot of good work in there for Hostos. And Rodriguez had it slipped away. Somebody tried to strip her of the ball, but it flipped out of bounds. So it'll be Hostos with 23 seconds to shoot. Now, Hostos brings Stephanie Aguayo back in the game, and they take out Yuli Rodriguez, who I thought gave them a little bit of a lift in there. She did some good work. Ball will come in play for Hostos in the orange. Sherban gets it. Block. And that time, it was Torres who made the block. Then up court, Awasika tracks it down. She was back to break up the play and saves it for Hostos, and they'll come out of the backcourt. Queensboro making a tough pass. And a top of the key jumper. She faked a little bit, got herself open. Nichols can't hit it. Oh boy, the leading scorer for the Tigers, uh, really nobody. They have two points from Rodriguez. They have uh, a basket from Gene Lewis, but not much else. And they miss again, and Hostos will bring it up. 8.44 in the first half. Joe Massey, Sean Couch. And the Tigers are sleepwalking a little. Here's a drive by Awasika, drives to the left, and there's a traveling violation. But let's give credit to Hostos. They've taken them out of the game, Sean. Controlling the tempo, Joe, and their shot selection has been decent. 
Uh, no one's really forcing shots, getting good looks, and you can see 13-5 right now, eight minutes to go. Not Only five points for the Lady Tigers. Not playing with the fire they did against Kingsborough for sure. Landry fits it in the corner to Torres. That was way off on her jump shot. You remember against Kingsborough, Torres missed a few right at the very beginning, and then she kind of lit the fire when she hit a big three, and then they started to come on. But she did not get that shot to go right there, so they stay on the scoreboard at 13-5. to five. Yeah, Jacqueline is a streaky player. So she'll miss about five or six, and then she'll hit five or six. So I know Coach Donato's looking for that uh, you know, shot to start clicking. Sherban had a good look and had a shot from just inside the foul line. Couldn't get it to go. Tried to square up. She did, in fact. Latasha Harris got the rebound. Latasha stops the dribble as she's getting uh, a little bit of pressure from Nichols. Now they'll try to work something in the half court. They have Latham in the lane. They pitch her the ball. She looks down low for any penetration. Couldn't find any over to Landry. Landry will turn it back out. Now there's only four seconds to shoot. Torres is not shooting. She's trying to pass, and that's going to uh, make it a shot clock violation. So they were not aware that the shot clock was ticking down. Torres was trying to make the pass underneath, but she didn't have enough time to get the ball there. Good D by Hostos. Eight turnovers now for the Queensboro Lady Tigers. I have unofficially here, too. Too many. Ball goes down low, but uh, now they turn it over, and Harris stepped in and deciphered that and took it away. Deciphered. Harris with the ball over to Landry. Landry wanted to shoot. Then she said, I want to pass, and she wound up doing neither. Elsie having a tough run right here. Shortest player on the floor, Joe, but remember in that Kingsborough game, she came in and was a great spark defensively yeah, uh, for them and uh, got the Lady Tigers on a roll. All right, we have a timeout right now. Reminds me of a little player that uh, also played in the community college ranks. I'm going to get her name because then she went on and played at Hunter in the ladies' ranks. Although this girl was a little more dynamic, and we saw her in a uh, tournament game, you remember, uh, you were there, Sean, uh, Shamar Stewartson. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, really yeah. lit up the court uh, uh -huh. and, and brought her uh, her team to a victory. Yeah, primo scorer, Shamar. She was with BMCC, oh, yeah. I believe. Mm -hmm. Shamar Stewartson. Oh, no, Hostos. She Hostos. Went, went to Hostos. Right here. And yeah. Went to Hunter. Went to Hunter. Uh, a dynamic score. Dynamic. She was more dynamic than uh, Elsie, but Elsie has the same kind of intensity when she yes, plays. Absolutely. And you never know what kind of player she'll develop in in the next year. Uh, I believe Elsie's in her first season. That is correct. 13 to 5. Hostos leading it. So um, the player we're talking about anyway, Stewartson, came on the court, and we were doing the ball games, I believe, was out of Kingsborough. Community College, the finals were, and we were looking at her. We say, Here, they're bringing in Stewartson. Boy, she's a small little player. She's nice. <laughs> Stewartson ripped everybody up that right. night. That's right. I remember one, one play. She just she stole the ball so fast, the person was still dribbling the ball, <laughs> and she just ran, you know, down the court. I believe she got tournament MVP. She just had a rocket. She was, she was a rocket. Yeah, she did, John. She got tournament MVP Absolutely. in 2006 under Rodney Carr. Rodney Carr was then coaching Hosto. There you go from your trivia, host, uh, your trivia CUNY Community College book. See that, Joe? You are Mr. CUNY. Everybody loves you because you remember that. Thank you. <laughs> 13 to 5. It'll be Lady Tiger Ball. 6.57 to go. Ball wow. goes cross court. And Elsie Landry is having a tough time right now. She couldn't hold on to that ball. I, I, they got a little crossed up, too, yeah, right Sabrina now. And them got, yeah, crossed up, Joe. Rodriguez is talking to it. Yeah. Yeah, you like Elsie. She, she's only 5'3". So you might want to make that quick pass, but then you have to look and say, you know, she might not be able to get to this. Comes outside. Here's Nichols with the ball. She passes it over to Sherbin in the right corner. Sherbin lost the ball. We are playing giveaway city right now, and it'll be Lady Tiger Ball. 21 total turnovers in the game right now. Very sloppy uh, basketball on both teams. But you know what? Uh, Queensboro has to be a little more tidy because they need to cut into that lead. And right there, they went to the bucket with authority with Kavana Jean Lewis. And she 
has uh, the other points that they registered on the scoreboard. And it's 13 to seven. Coast Coast gets to lose ball. They send it outside on the rebound. Sherbon had it poked away. Here come the Lady Tigers. And she did a lot of this the other night. Rodriguez getting up court. She only she can run the court and she scored. That's a game in transition. 13 to nine. Sorry to cut you off, John. 13 to nine. Four point edge for a host. So they've, uh, they've made a little bit of an indentation and then Rodriguez with a quick hands. Just took it out of the air. They give it back from Landry. How did this happen now? <laughs> Elsie knowing what to do in transition. Give and go right there, Joe. Pass back right to the cutter. It was like the Tigers just had a turn on switch, Sean. They, they've run off six straight points, and they're down 13-11 with 5.25 to go. And when you come to Queensboro, and, you, and the Tigers get another turnover. When you come and watch Queensboro play, the ladies are very entertaining. There's no doubt about that. We've done how many Queensboro Lady games? They are good games. Come over to the left side. Dish across court. Rodriguez fires no good. Rebound ticks off a host nose player. It'll be Queensboro ball. But there's something to be said for winning too, Sean. You know, you know you're always coming out doing the winning team here on the ladies' side. And the men, they are getting there. They were there, they're trying to get back to that level. Come back outside, here's a jumper. No good. That was Torres unleashing the jumper from the left and they're really scrambling now. That was Elsie going down to the floor to tie it up and questioning what the call was. And it'll be Hostos ball. Lady Tigers have two players that come in and give them energy. That's Kavana Jean Lewis and Elsie Langley in the game right now, making things happen, and all of a sudden, they're only down by two points. That ball popped off a hand and actually got to the receiver, Yuli Rodriguez. They put her back in the game, Yuli, number 14, because she did remarkable work down in that low post. And then they took her out of the game, and uh, they seem to have suffered from that move, and they bring Yuli back in, and she got fouled. She'll go to the line. The foul line, was King, called on 14, Latham, her second. Nobody's in foul two. trouble. That's three team fouls apiece. Not a lot of fouls in this game so far. Rodriguez at the line for two. First one is good. 14-11 for Hostos, the Caymans. And when you go in their arena, it's, it's not a big arena. It's a pretty little orange and blue arena in the Bronx. And they have a stuffed Cayman that they put on the table, like, or they used to anyway. And it's cute. Well, they actually <laughs> have now a mascot. And now they have a big mascot. Cayman that walks around and entertains them. 15-11. Come on the right side. Here's a jumper, no good. That was Torres. Latham got the rebound, and we have a foul. In case uh, you're not caught up with what it came in, it is a little alligator. It's an alligator, actually. And thrown in from underneath, 431 to go. Checking to the game for Lady Tigers. Latham will Number sit down. Tigers bring uh, Kavana Jean Lewis back in the game. Perhaps Coach Denardo wants uh, a little more of a slicing effect, so uh, Jean Lewis. Uh, now again by Hostos on the inbound. First person foul. And the ball will be put in again. Latasha Harris feeds it over to Gene Lewis. No, he wants her to shoot it. She shot it there, but couldn't get it to go. And Awasika grabbed the rebound, and then there was a tussle. And whose ball will it be? It will be pointing in Hostos' direction, or Queensboro's direction. With Hostos up 15 11. Tigers will throw it in, shoot right here down at this basket. 4.19 to go. They set it up in the corner. Rodriguez drives across, gives it off to Latasha Harris. One high on the glass with her drive shot. No good. And Landry pulled out the rebound, had it tapped to her, and she was right there to grab it. So the Tigers hold on to it. 4.02 to go. They go back on the left wing. Jumper no good by Rodriguez from out there. Another rebound by St. Louis. Or Lewis throwing it all the way to the backcourt. And Landry could not track it down, Elsie. So it'll go over to Hostos. And they're still up by four. 
And this game has been played in spurts. Tigers had a big spurt. They scored six in a row. Now they're looking for something again offensively. They did it on turnovers, basically. They're not shooting the ball well. Here's Awashika getting it to the foul line. And there, Aguayo never really got it got up. She was closed in on. And here oh. is Rodriguez. Oh. Could it make the final burst to the basket? And Awasika will try to get two on the board. No. The defender pushed her away a little bit, made it a tougher layup on that. Awasika tried to guide it in, but couldn't do it. And then they get a pushing foul. Boy, we could run a highlight on that. Sabrina Rodriguez with the Hezo caught Jacqueline Awasika out there. Second foul on Rodriguez, Back Sean. on that one. Second foul on Rodriguez. She has quick hands. Come around to the right to Torres, 3.18 to go. Rodriguez to Landry, no. And there is Gene Lewis. So Cavana has made it a two point affair now. Two point game here in the afternoon at Queensborough Community College and related Tigers are in the zone. Here is Nichols. And Rodriguez has the hands to do it again. And she comes down. And Nichols got back, slapped at the ball, but fouled her. Had a fouler. Trying to make the block. Actually made a good run back to get back in the play. You have to really be careful around Sabrina Rodriguez up on the top of your guard. She anticipates extremely well when you throw passes. And she has three steals already with the same sort of uh, technique. First free throw, no good. Well, she has long arms, she's big, long legs. Her hands are quick. That adds up to trouble. <laughs> Absolutely, and you know what? She has her hands out. So, you know, she gives you, it looks like her hands aren't in the lane, but because she's so quick, they are in the lane. Yeah. <laughs> They're not, but they are. But they are, and that's that's, and that's what catches them, just what Sean said. They're not there, but they are. Here is Nichols. Sending on her right, get it down low. Ball goes inside, Rodriguez turns. And Rodriguez got fouled. That reminds me, I was watching and everybody loves Raymond. He was trying to get a comic book for his daughter. He went to this guy who sold comic books. He told him his name. He said, you from the IRS? He goes, no. He goes, you don't look like an IRS guy. He goes, no, I told you I wasn't. He says, that's why I think you are. And that's exactly what happens with Rodriguez. She don't look like she's there, folks. And then she is. First one, no good. 15-13. Yuli Rodriguez will try another one. Here it is. There it is. She got it. I have her three of six from the line. She's been there quite a few times. 16-13. Hostos by three. 2.27 to go. Now they work it around the perimeter. Torres fires from out there. No. Rebound comes down in the hands of Sherban. Sherban trying to get it out of the backcourt. Gives it over to Awasika. 2.10 to go. Awasika is going to take it all the way in the lane. Had it knocked away. It looked like she was ready to deliver that ball. And someone poked in there and just stripped it away from her. I'm, I'm not sure that wasn't Landry who got a hand in there, too. He'll be thrown in by Nichols. 19 to shoot. Sherban gets a fake, and she's lanky, and she gets a good look at the basket, and she knocks that down. That was a very well-executed move. Just nice shot fake. Gain space, Joe. She's a nice player. Just, just well executed. Textbook. She is a freshman from Moscow State Academy, Moscow, Russia. All the way from Russia up in the Bronx. He can do it. 147 to go. Driving move. Good. Nichols, and they caught the fire back, Sean uh, Hostos, or they've survived the little fire of the Tigers, and now they put it together again. They lead 20 to 13. Harris sends it down inside for Gene Lewis, and Cavana could not handle it as uh, there was someone on the baseline avoiding uh, the situation and uh, not letting her get the ball. 
Well, Hosto's showing us they have some staying power because the Tigers came running at them and now they've smoothed things out again and they look very, very uh, in control. There's a drive and a block on the drive and the Tigers come up with it as Nichols tries to get it to the basket. Tigers can use a bucket, Queensboro, and they hung it short. Everything but the basket on that. And Marie Johnson, number 55, there has the gimme layup. Great pass from uh, Got to make uh, Gene Lewis. Johnson couldn't get it. Stays 20 to 13. We're down to 52 seconds to go. And Aguayo banks that one. And they've made it an even bigger lead now. It's a nine-point lead with 42 seconds uh, for Hostos to go in the first half. Nice job by Hostos closing this half and switching now to a 1-3-1 one, one defense, making it even tougher for the Lady Tigers to see the basket. Jumper from out there, no good by Harris with 22 on the game clock. And that's the one we're watching now, and it'll be Hostos Ball on the rebound. And they're up by nine. They can extend it to double figures if they get one on the board here. Awasika, Jacqueline inside. Yuli Rodriguez tried to make a pass, threw it to the right, and Gene Lewis stepped into it, oh. stole it. And Gene Lewis took the price of that hit from Yuli Rodriguez, but she'll end up at the line as a reward. So uh, Rodriguez trying to get back in the play, threw her body in there and uh, got nothing but Kavana. Well, that looked like tomorrow's action right there. <laughs> that was a good tackle, yes. That's the way they teach you to tackle. Wow. <laughs> Gene Lewis, no good. 2.5 seconds still to go, and the Tigers holding the ball, and they won't get a shot off. So the free throw was missed, and then the Tigers didn't realize they still had a little time on the clock, or they didn't realize they had so little time on the clock, and they never got the ball out, and that's the way the half will come to an end. And kudos to Hostos, because they took what the Tigers dished out, and then they came right back. And I like this Hostos team because they don't do it with a fury. They do it very smooth. They're a smooth ball club. So far in the first half, uh, Joe controlled the tempo. Defensively did a good job. Um, <clears throat> did a good job, Joe, getting their hands in the passing lanes, challenging all the shots. They didn't let Queensboro have any comfort level offensively. And the girl who really led the way with her point scoring was Sherban from Moscow State Academy. And uh, Moscow, Russia, she had 10 points. 14 uh, 19 till we go to our second half. We have a little time for the Tigers to get it together in the locker room, uh, try to put something together to deal with what Hostos did to them at the end of that first half. Remember, the Tigers made a rush, came right back into the game. So they're going to have to figure a few things out. Myself, Joe Massey, Sean Couch will be back with you. We'll help you figure it out as we go down the stretch. We'll have more. Queensboro, 22 to 13 in favor of the Caymans of Hostos. And uh, Caymans will start out with the ball in the nine point lead. Bob DiNardo very patiently talking to his girls between halves, giving them a little instruction. And let's see. If he was able to settle them down a little, that's what they really need right now, Sean. Settle down and uh, run their offense, play some defense. Rodriguez got it across, and Latasha Harris picked up that basketball and traveled with it. So commit a turnover right off the bat. Possession Started the game that way. 13 turnovers total for Queensboro Lady Tigers. Right into it, a half minute, they turn it over, and here comes Hostos. Hostos was led in the first half by Christina Sherbans, eight points. That ball uh, comes off, and uh, Harris, uh, Latham got the rebound. Big number 42 for Queensboro. Queensboro down by nine. They pitch it to Torres, fires no on the three-pointer from the left side. And again, Jacqueline Torres has been uh, scoreless. They were led in the first half by Sabrina Rodriguez with six points, 13 on the board for the Lady Tigers in all. There's a drive on a poke away by Torres. Torres hands Rodriguez up ahead, gets to the ball. Rodriguez will drive. Sabrina ahead. Rodriguez with the layup. 
Eight points on the layup for Sabrina Rodriguez. That's basically how the Tigers have gotten all their points, Sean, on turnovers and the break. 22 to 15. So they're going to be aggressive now. And Hostos pitch around the perimeter, looking in the lane for Sherban. Then they get it to Aguayo. Aguayo misses that shot, but they got the rebound and they threw it out. And they didn't realize that she was there again, Rodriguez. And Rodriguez gets down there and draws the foul. She will pop up and out and jut. Foul is on number 23, John Asia Turner. And that was on Turner getting back. It's his second foul. Team's John Asia Turner foul, trying to get hand. back in the play and cut her off. At the line, do it. Two. Once Rodriguez gets those Sabrina legs going, Rodriguez. it's very hard to catch up to her because she has a lot of length. First one is no good. That was uh, one of her poor free throws. 0 for 3 from the line. Not doing so far. well from the line. She'll get a little more bend and try to deliver it on target, and it works. He's got nine points now. 22-16. Well, the Tigers have sliced a little off that lead anyway. They've uh, broken it down by three. It's a six-point edge. There's the teardrop by Awasika on the runner, no good. And they get it right out to Rodriguez. So obviously they want to get Rodriguez the ball on the open floor wherever they can, and they're going to look for it. Harris, way cross court, Torres catches, moves into the corner with it. We have a whistle and a turnover for the Lady Tigers. Been tough for Jacqueline Torres these last couple of games uh, with the injury, and now today, not able to cash in on the throw in by Sherban. Went right to Queensboro, and here they come again. Harris leading the break. Hostos got back sufficiently to fill the lane. Tigers are down by six, trying to set it up, get it over to Harris. Harris drives across the baseline, switches to the left hand, and is able to guide it in. Nice move on the baseline by Leticia Harris with the double cross and then using the glass effectively. We have time being taken by Hostos right now with the lead down to four. Good job by the Lady Tigers with a couple of minutes off that clock here in the second half. And Joe, Queensboro really needs to teach Harris to step up. She's one of their best players besides Sabrina Rodriguez. Only had one point in the first half, and she is a slasher. She draws fouls, and she's that, that catalyst uh, offensively that they've been missing. And she is trying to prod something to happen now. 22 to 18. And she's another player who's streaky, along with Jacqueline Torres, who hasn't made a shot either um, from the field. So, you know, if those two can get going, then we can see why Queensboro is 6 and 1 in this conference, the leading team. Right now, they're not playing up to that level. Certainly are not, but uh, they're starting to put it together just a bit here. And so it's 17:20. We're just under the, or just over the three-minute in mark. And Hostos will throw it in. Hostos now trying to get on the board. They came into the half with a 22-13 lead. They haven't gotten on the board. Sherban, head of the key, had Rodriguez pop out on her and bat the ball away. Goes into the backcourt. The uh, track down again by Turner. That is not an over and back because the Queensboro player hit it. And then uh, Wasika steps up and nails a three. Big one to get them on the board finally. 25-18. It's the second three of the game. Right wing dribble off the foot inadvertently by Gene Lewis will give it back to Hostos. He tried to put it on the floor and a shot from the corner no good. Now it's taken down by Queensboro. Queensboro with a uh, seven-point deficit after that three-point shot to work on. Comes out to Rodriguez. Rodriguez throws it into a pair of hands, just waiting at the left of the lane. Martinez, Margaret Martinez, knocked it away for Hostos in the orange, and here they come again. 16-11 to go. And it's said the Tigers have played this game in spurts. They've gotten sloppy. They cut the lead, then they fall behind again. A little duck in by Martinez is no good there on the baseline. And the Lady Tigers have it. Dish it into the corner and back out. 
Come around on the perimeter to Torres. Torres from the left. Fires. Two-point shot. No good. Latham rebound. They pitch it around. They go deep on the right side. They go back out to Torres. Try again. Trying to hit her first shot of the night. Or day will not do it. Just rippled the net a little bit. Didn't get there. 25-18. It's taken off by Hostos. Yeah, Jacqueline having a rough shooting uh, afternoon. She's one for ten. One, I think it's either one for ten or one for, excuse me, zero for ten from the field. Chaban missed about a 13-foot shot, her little mid-range shot. And the Tigers come the other way with a seven-point deficit still in front of them. And here is Rodriguez across the lane and throws it back. He has that dexterity to go across the lane and uh, then whirl and get it back. And that's what she did, and it's 25-20. And out of the 20 Queensboro points, she scored 11. 14-48 to go in the basketball game from Queensboro. Pass off the hand of Torres, rushed for, garnered in by Martinez. Martinez for Hostos, misses. Sherban got the rebound. Little bank shot spun around the rim, came out. Another shot was blocked. A piece of it was gotten on the Turner put back, and then the Tigers take it off. Well, the Tigers scrambling on defense, making something happen, and here comes Rodriguez. That will not hang in the bucket, but you got fouled. Uh, in fact, it's traveling that's going to be called. And in fact, that was Torres, uh, Sean. I called her Rodriguez, but they do look similar in a certain regard when you get a side view of them. But she got called for traveling. Queensboro turns an opportunity there into a hostess possession, and Torres made up for that with a steal. Now finds her teammate Rodriguez. And she can't put it in. She's very rarely done that, but that time she rushed it, and then Hostos bails her out a little bit by knocking it out. You don't expect her to miss those layups when she has them, but she did there. So the Tigers will throw it in. 25 to 20. Little jump shot, Latham, no. Rodriguez rebounding. Brina Rodriguez. Tigers are really having trouble right now putting something together, but they scramble and they hold on to the ball again. Now Jacqueline Torres shooting one, zero for 12 from the field really should try to shorten her game up. Here's Latham off the inbound, no. Hostos trying to get to the loose ball and they finally do on the rebound, Turner. You know, Maybe Joe, to just, just not making it. Maybe trying to catch, put the ball on the floor, they get closer to the rim and take some shots off the dribble or get to the basket. Then, and then Joe Nasha Turner can't put it in the other way. Both teams have a lid on that basket with Hostos leading at 25-20. Corner shot set up. Not pretty, as that was a total miss there by Irby. Irby with only two points in the game, could have put that in, so the lead stays at five with 13.05 to go. And then a banker that is off the mark by Hostos. 12.58 to go. Here comes Queensboro the other way. Look to set it up with Rodriguez. Rodriguez gets it back. Jumper, God, finally, someone nails one. That was Latasha Harris, and she got a three-pointer. That's their first one of the game. 5-23. Comes at a big time, Joe, with 12 minutes to go down two. Well, both teams struggling offensively, and Rodriguez is the steal, and here the Tigers can tie up the ball game, and Irby does. So, it became a game of attrition there for about two minutes, and then the Tigers pop out and they tie the game at 25. And this is not an easy game to gauge at all, uh, because it's just a matter of who's gonna do what at what time. And the Tigers have had about five spurts in this game where they've been dominant, and they've uh, been enough now to get them into a tie. It's their defense that's gotten them back into the game. Sabrina Rodriguez, again, opportunistic in the passing lanes along with Jacqueline Torres, even though she's not shooting well, 
uh, she's playing good defense. And defense wins games, Joe, and that's why they're 6-1. and one. They know how to turn it up and how to get the job done. Sabrina Rodriguez from Robert Wagner High School, a Queens girl, Queens, New York. First season with the team. And, of course, this is community college basketball. Joe Massey and Sean Couch here at Queensboro. Happy to have you along. And we will reiterate to you that in community college, you only play two years. So the second-year girl is actually a senior here. And then she goes on to the, uh, you know, the uh, senior college, wherever. We will state again, too, if you're not familiar with it, that some of these girls and some of these guys, they have a possibility of going on maybe even to a higher rank somewhere, playing for school Division Two, And if they're good enough, who knows, Division I. Um, you don't see a lot of them go Division One, but you do see a, a, a good amount of them go Division Two. And, you know, Queensboro Community College, you can see all the banners on, on that uh, wall. This is a school rich in tradition of winning. Um, baseball, indoor track, men, you know, men's track. Uh, basketball, I mean, the, the women's basketball team, Joe, per perennial champions in this community college league. I think they have won four in a row. So Four in a row. This is, this is a tradition here of winning. And, and Joseph Medina is not here anymore, and he won the four, and then he moved on get a better situation for himself but uh, you know he needed maybe to move a little bit loved his time here spoke to him wonderful man uh, and then they brought in Bob Denardo here a teacher and he is now running the program and I have to say it hasn't fallen off all that much and Hostos will go to the line here as they work to play for Iwasika. The game tied at 25. Now they called it uh, on the ground. That's uh, Blayton's yeah. third foul, number 42 for Queensboro. Here is Sherban. And now uh, they uh, carelessly uh, throw the ball to the left. And Irby was there to pick it off. And uh, they got back to it with Gene Lewis. It was almost a turnover for the Tigers. And here's Gene Lewis navigating to the basket and puts it in. Got Gene Lewis in the game as the killer, Joe. They, she comes in for energy, and she really has a, a good knack also of getting to the basket and making things happen. At five foot six, Joe, she's down there playing the fourth position, playing big. Well, these teams coming in one and two in the Cuny Community College ranks. One and two. Queensboro the one, Hostos the two. And right now, Hostos is feeling the pressure. And they've fallen behind by two points, 27-25. Yeah, Gene Lewis down there, boxed out there, the bigger uh, Sherban. Just good fundamentals. Uh, right player, Joe. Right now, the Tigers are showing their numbers a little bit. They uh, have girls coming in and out that are very tough girls, and it's starting to take a little toll. Outside with the ball, Rodriguez passes it over on the right. Back to Rodriguez, sets up, tries the outside shot, no good. I believe that's her first outside shot of the night, and Hostos went for the loose ball and didn't get it, and it's going to stay with the Lady Tigers. And Joe, you know, every team has a player off the bench that's supposed to come in and provide energy. You know, I call it the killer position. It's the position where you come in, your team is down by maybe seven, down by ten down by 12. You come right in and you make something happen, a steal, a rebound, a deflection, whatever it might be. You change that tempo of the game and make it happen. And that's uh, Kiana Jane Luis. That's her role. She uh, took that shot right there and it was no good. She uh, pulled back on it and couldn't get it. Maybe a little off balance. And she has supplied six points, G. Lewis. 27-25, 11.06 to go. Outside, here's Hostos with the ball. Hostos trying from the right on a little bit of a drive and a shift to the right and missed by Turner. There goes Queensboro the other way. And that came up short, but Irby picked it off inside on the miss by Gene Lewis, and then Hostos rips it away with Rodriguez. You know, even though that was a bad shot, she's trying to make things happen. She and is. Irby had a, a, a layup there. She concentrated and made that shot. Hostos has a chance to tie, but Rodriguez punches it away, then goes still after the ball, and it's recovered by Turner. Turner in a heap of trouble, gets it over to Rodriguez. 
She tries to hand it off, Yuli Rodriguez, and the host is being forced to uh, scramble with the ball, and they finally do turn it over. And down on the floor is Rodriguez. Remember, she gave that belt before, and now she took one back, and she has uh, not gotten up yet. Coach is calling them over on the Hostos bench. Is the game uh, getting a little slower, a little more physical, and uh, right now they'll talk it over. 9.57 to go, and Queensboro has the lead. And they have done everything they can to get into that lead. They've been behind by nine points, 11 points, I believe. They have really uh, done a job in the second half. Generating turnovers. Uh, Hostos has eight turnovers for the half. Nine minutes and 57 seconds to go in the game, Joe. That's almost been a turnover per minute. And Queensboro's done a great job, um, you know, translating those into baskets for themselves. And that's why they're up by two. Well, Sabrina is um, really tough to deal with, Sabrina Rodriguez. And she changes the, uh, as you said, you know, Gene Lewis changes the pacing of the game. But what Sabrina does is she just makes it so difficult out there that you always have to be aware you're throwing a lazy pass you're not looking you're not paying attention she's going to get in that passing lane and then it somehow turns into two for the Tigers right away because not only does she do that but she has the ability to get up the court and she can really play the game of basketball I covered a girl at Queens a couple of years ago who played just like her and she led the Queens Knights to a title she get up court make steals and get to the basket. And that is an invaluable tool that Bob DiNardo works with here in his first year as coach. Well, and that doesn't look good there for the Hostos Caymans with uh, Yuli Rodriguez limping off, has her shoe off. Looks like she has a twisted ankle. It's really swollen on the inside, if you can see it right there. She had done a big job for them earlier, and she took a, a heavy hit there and fell, never got up. They're now helping her to the side, as Sean said. And this Hostos team really needs a victory, Joe. They are coming off, uh, you know, they're on a losing streak right now. And, you know, looking for this win here against the first place Cayman. Excuse me, Lady Tigers. First place Lady Tigers, and you mentioned it, a lot of batters on the board, and they've popped up there over the past five years. All right, play back in. Tigers have the ball. Gene Lewis with Harris. Irby, that was Irby inside. Couldn't get it, but Latham saved the play, and she will get fouled. Latham and Rodriguez are the other two. So we'll put Latham at the line. She has yet to score, Precious Latham, at 5'11", but she will get an opportunity here. Got a few big rebounds, made some defensive plays. Here's her first. No good. Looked like she was just trying to lean it and get that ball in the bucket. And stay a little more on balance with this free throw. 27-25 Queensboro. That is good. 28-25. And every point matters right now, Sean. We are in a, a defensive game. Queensboro with the lead. First point of the night. Hostos with the ball, 9.29 on the clock. They place it to Aguayo. She didn't have a good look. She was in the midst of traffic and knocked it off the top of the backboard. And then back is Awasika, read that pass and picked it off like a cornerback. She was in great position and just made the intercept. Then they throw it back and it's by Turner and all the way into the backboard out of bounds. Yeah, this is Jekyll and Hyde for Hostos, Joe. 22-13 in halftime. They only have two three points. Three points, half. yeah. Actually two. Oh, excuse me, three. Yeah. Right, Joe. Three points is half. And, um, you know, just not getting it done. Turnovers, not locating the shooters. Uh, Christina Sherban has disappeared from their offense. Well, you remember earlier, Sean, uh, they had a nice lead. Queensboro cut into it, but they rebounded very well. But they haven't done it this time. Here's Rodriguez set up for three. No good. And Sherbon got the rebound. That would have been a hurting three right there. She was able to make it. Sherbon then had a host of Tigers gather in on her and come up the foul. A host of Tigers fouling the Hostos player. Second foul called on Latasha Harris. 
No team foul wise in anybody's uh, favor in foul trouble. It's 3 2 on the scoreboard team fouls. Hostos has three, Queensboro two. There's Charban finding it tough to score now, missing on that runner in the lane. But it's grabbed by Awasika who brings it out. We said she gets a lot of rebounds at the guard spot. Here she has the ball again out there, rescued it. Fires it right to the foul line, and Rodriguez's hands broke up another one. And they give it back to Rodriguez. She bounced off the side of her leg, but she was able to relocate it. Fires it into Irby. After everything cleared, she found Irby. She just waited that split second, Sean, or waited for that time for everybody to put their hands down, and she threw it down there. And Irby put it in. And Rodriguez is an invaluable player. Here's Sherban. And they are giving it away now, Hostos. 7.57 to go. They've become a bit unglued. Here is Harris. See if they can recover, Hostos. Going the baseline, and Gene Lewis hits it. And you know what? Queensboro's not going to let them recover. Gene Lewis, the killer. 32 25. I have Gene Lewis for eight points. Very big ones. Sean might correct me, he is welcome to do that, but it's 32 to 25. And you are correct. Eight points for Gene Lewis off the bench at the killer position. Good job, Joe. Killer job too, Sean, because that one really hammered it to host us that we are not gonna let you come oh, back here, out. ladies. You're gonna have to claw your oh, way no, back because they're down by seven game. now with that clock running down on them. And Hostos has really disintegrated offensively, can't hold on to the ball. Losing the battle of the boards right now, being out rebounded uh, 26 to 18. So, you know, they really have to try to reassert themselves. And they were doing a great job, Joe, just they were. locating, you know, Sherbon, getting the ball I in the middle. I told you the first time. Just doing, just doing little things well. The now Tigers it's just not made there. a run at them. And they could have gotten very rattled at that point. The lead was vanquished down to one or vanished down to one. And then they steadied themselves again, and they just smoothly operated, as you're talking about, and they built the lead again, and it's going into half. And it's not like Queen Cross doing anything different. They're still in that 2-3 zone. Still the same look. It's just a lack of focus, it seems like, for the host host team. They have to make that adjustment and try to be safer with the ball, maybe some ball fakes. Uh, cutting through the lane, having their hands up, just little things so they can make the adjustment. Well, Still that, in the game. Yeah, that timeout right there was a very important one, the most important one of the game with 7.42 to go. Coach is still trying to tell them, we still have a chance in this game. Just try to settle down a little bit, get something on the board. They've only got three points on the board in the second half. Here's Iowa Seeker with the ball. Iwasika holding it outside in the corner. They go back to Iwasika from Sherbon. And then a fall away from the baseline. No good. Aguayo got the rebound. And before she got in position to put it up, she did move the feet and got called for traveling. And you could see, Sean, they're just a little off with their shots. They're very tentative. They're trying to make something happen, but they don't have that, they don't have that uh, ease that they had earlier in the game. There's a jumper from the corner. No good by Irby, but... A big player for Queens, Gene Lewis pulled it off again and brought it outside. Then they set up Harris, who misses. And the ball out of bounds in the hands of Awasika, who fell out of bounds. And Hostos not able to hold on to secure anything right now with seven minutes on the clock, down by seven. 32 25. The Caymans came in here and played very well in the first half. Second half has been a different story. Here's Rodriguez trying to nail another one home, but it was picked off by Irby. Sorry, Irby and G. St. Louis, they're like twins out there, they right? They look, they look like each other in there. Just doing the little things, and you love players like that. They get the extra possession, that, you know, go after the offensive uh, boards, that steal the ball. These, these two girls are doing a, a very, very effective uh, job this uh, afternoon. Right there, Irby stepped on the sideline, and here's Awasika delivering for Hostos. No good. Rebound trying to be controlled, but never was by Martinez. And the Tigers, they've been just that. They've been Tigers on those loose balls. They haven't given Hostos a chance to steady themselves again. 
And the pull up, a little bow shot by Gene Lewis, no good. Rodriguez causing all kinds of havoc down there. Gets the ball, gives to Harris. Couldn't get behind her to get the uh, over the head layup up. The reverse, she was too far under the basket, but then got hit in trying to stay in there. And it's going to be a Hostos, uh, no, it's going to be Hostos ball. They called Harris for the foul, her third. That is her third. We're up on the 608 mark. Joe Massey, Sean Cash. Tigers lead it 32-25 to here from Queensboro at their home. The home of the Lady Tigers and Men Tigers. There's a drive down the right side. No good. Aguayo, no good. That lid is solidly on the basket now. And here is Gene Lewis. Take it easy, Gene Lewis. You have a layup, and that's what you do. Ten points for Gene Lewis. 21 to three right now is the differential this half with the Lady Tigers just taking over on Holston. One of the stars of the game right there. 34-25. Awasika, nice three-pointer there. And they needed that, needed that, needed that. I say it three times because they really did. Awasika has all the three-point shots for Holston. That was a two, by the way. They that gave was a two. two. Okay. 34-27. They're just on the line. And <laughs> she wants to do more damage, Gene Lewis. That one trickled off the rim. Here's Awasika now. They're down by seven, and they foul her. And she got a head of steam going. Now let's measure this very carefully. Let's see what Hostos can accomplish in 501. They're down by seven. We had a game last night in the men's ranks where York was behind, behind against Mega Evers, and they just very meticulously, very painfully, got back to within two points. So you never know. You just never know. They'll be thrown in. Comes out. Here's Sherbin. Sherbin just lost it in transit to Rodriguez. She just stole it right away from her. And gives the ball finally to Gene Lewis, who got fouled at the bucket. Rodriguez just said, I will take that. Foul is on number 10, Jackie Awosika. Awosika Al got back, committed the foul there. Two, on the very fleet of foot, Jean Lewis. When she gets out of the gate, Sean, she's gone. And her first free throw is no good, and she's not happy about that. She does have eight points and a very big role in this game. 34-27, still a seven-point Queensboro lead. She'll like to make it eight, and that she does. 11 points, Joe. All right, give her 11. I, I thought it was off on one basket, and you just jump in there and let me know. All right. 35 27. Wow. 440 to go. That Yikes. is a very, very hard to take turnover. And now, coach is trying to you know, just keep them mentally alive. Say, come on, turn around, play defense. Come on, ladies. Because that's what they have to do. Torres with the ball. Torres in the right corner. She's going to try to hit her first outside shot of the night, but she still can't do it. And again, that would have been a hurting one. We have Hostos down by eight. Here comes Hostos, 4.22 to go. Awasika, three-pointer this time, but it wouldn't go. And Kavana Jean Lewis pulled it off. Now you might want to use that clock a little bit if you're Queensboro. 21 to shoot. They're up by eight. They go in the corner. They're trying to pass it back out and use a little more time. Find a good shot, of course, in that process. Nine seconds to shoot. Rodriguez forced that one, but it did end up in the hands of Gene Lewis. What happened was Sherman couldn't hold it. She had her hands on it, but she just dropped the ball on the court, and Gene Lewis is small and navigates around. She just picked up the ball. Gene Lewis show nine points this half. 37-27, a 10-point Hostos deficit now as Queensboro has the lead. And here's Gene Lewis again. And they go on the break, the ladies. And then Gene Lewis, she just doesn't stop. <laughs> I remember I was talking to that coach Rodney Harris I talked to you about many times, Rodney Carr, and he said, this girl's like the Energizer Bunny for me when he was talking about one of his players. And that's what she's like. She caused the tie-up and Hostos takes over. 323, 37, 27. 
Here's Hostos. They go to Sherban. She has been scoreless in the second half. They have held her off the board, Sean. That Russian girl who had a very good first half has not made an account for herself here. Now there's a foul on Queensboro. No, no, three second violation and Queensboro will get the ball and uh, that, there's all she wrote on trying to stop them. Nobody got back. 15 points. The floodgates have opened. Gene Lewis scored and Queensboro's up by 12. Hostos is in complete disarray. Sherban trying to get inside and have that ball knocked away. It just didn't get back that time and uh, they've lost focus of what's going on. Understandable, they came into this half with 23 points and a nine point lead, was it? The ball's free again on the floor. They get it out to Sherbin, 2.41 to go. Sherbin in the lane for a little floater and hits it. Finally, a little easing up of uh, the flooding, 39-29. Yeah, it was 22 to 13, Sean, at the 19-32 mark in favor of uh, Hostos. 22 to 13. Since then, they've only scored seven points. Here's Charban working hard as they go back to work to try to close that gap a little bit. She got fouled at the basket. Could use her size a little bit. She does have length. She'll go to the line here. Foul was on Kalina Marshall. And we haven't called her name too much tonight, uh, this afternoon. I said we'd say tonight a few times, and we have. One more shot. Well, Shabran now has um, 11 in the ball game. And the lead is 39 to 30. And now the lead's 39-31. Two minutes, you know, two minutes to go, Joe. Hosto still in, the in their game. zone, in, in, in the game, still in the zone. With the advent of the three-point shot, you're always in the game. 2.08 to go. 39-31. But you just, uh, out of curiosity, did you get a chance to partake of that three-point uh, pleasure at all when you were playing? I played one year in 1987. That was the first year of the three-point line. One year. I was 50. I was a 50% shooter from the three-point line. Otherwise, you played your whole career in the dark ages. Uh, but except when you got to the now? NBA. <laughs> when you got to the NBA. Right. That's right. And uh, in the CBA and the USBL. But no, I call it the dark ages because that was basketball pre three-point shot. I mean, and, and, and you and see all the scoring also. totals in this book here. Shot clock also. And too. shot clock. There was no shot clock. And you see all the scoring. Well, that's in college. Mm -hmm. You see all the. All the names in this book, and you go down the thousand point scores and the all time scores, and they're colored a little bit by the fact that those fellas didn't have a three point shot. So if they amassed all those points, like 1,988, you can put uh, maybe about another uh, few hundred, close to half a thousand in there if they had played their career with the three point shot. But we're not going to get into that because that's nonsense. You know, you, nah. you could only go by what you have and you, you gauge everything by how good somebody is. But it always has to be brought up anyway. 39 31, 208 to go. Queensboro with the ball. Ball comes in. And stop. here's Sabrina Rodriguez, and they'll stop things because the clock did not start up. And it's John Glazer there, the head ref, along with Tom Matthews today. Doing a good job. Good job. Not a lot of fouls called in this game. They've let the ladies play. 39-31. Queensboro with the ball. Eight-point lead. A minute 59 to protect. And you want to use the clock, as I stated earlier. Here's Torres. Torres trying to stumble her way forward and finally gave up the ball. A little bit out of control. Gives Hostos an opportunity, but Rodriguez snatches it back. Rodriguez ahead of the field. Try to give her a nickname, she's the thief. <laughs> you have her for 13? Yeah, she is the thief, Joe. A lot of that was wow. done on that theft and then the uh, consequent layup. 
41-31, minute 21 to go. That just might have taken all the air out of Hostos. We will see. They uh, give up the ball down there with a minute 21 to go. That last layup was a killer. That last fast break there. 41-31, minute 20 to go. Hostos now an extended man-to-man -man now, trying to generate some pressure on Queensboro. That's about all they can do. And you know you're going to commit fouls if they just hold on to the ball. Latham with it. Ten seconds to shoot. Torres gives it up. Jumper, good. Marshall, Kalina Marshall hasn't spent a lot of time in the game, but he showed us a jump shot there and got two on the board. He sealed the deal with that one there. And there was, uh, once again, the girl from Russia popping up and hitting a shot to make it 43-34. That was a three-pointer. So she says, not so quickly, Mr. Couch, but uh, they, are in, they are in very difficult uh, position right now. 15 points for Shaban. Gonna have to generate some turnovers here off their um, quickness and guile. 44 seconds, it'll be thrown in. They have to foul, too, and, and do a lot of it. And Marshall got fouled, 41.9 seconds. She hit the big shot before just then, and she'll come up now and get some free throws. No, she won't, because they're not over the limit yet. They have to foul just to get over the limit. They have 16 fouls. Third foul was whistled. On Tiffany Nichols. Thrown in. Intercepted by Turner. Down by nine, are they? They need a three pointer on the board. Traban tries to put it on the board, but can't. And the rebound by Marshall. She's played a big uh, last couple of minutes of this game. They give it over to Latham. Work the clock. 12 seconds on the shot clock. That was too too low and too uh, too slow in coming that pass. And Awasika picked it off as it was telegraphed, but then she can't do anything with it. And with 11.9, the game is in Queensboro's uh, column, and they will stay in first place in the community college ranks for the CUNY, unless uh, something just totally dramatic happens here. 11.9 seconds, Bob DiNardo brings him over. Now he's teaching a lesson on how to throw a pass when you want to kill that clock. Don't take your time and throw it that slowly. Got to be careful. And you see Stephanie Arguello on the side there has uh, ice wrap. They really missed it. She was, she was uh, getting inside, Joe, making strong moves to the basket, rebounding. Yes. They missed her presence down the stretch. Certainly did. Certainly did. Nine point game. You know, as good as Sabrina Rodriguez is, and she's in her first year here, what do you teach her? You say, Sabrina, you're trying to milk time off that clock. That pass was too slow. You got to do it a little quicker than that. So that's about all you could say about her tonight, though. And Rodriguez is outside, and she got bumped there, and she held the ball away, you notice, that time, and was more careful with it with 8.7 seconds to go. Good sportsmanship by Janisha Turner there on Very the foul. Good. But one one, Lady Tigers coming through just Sabrina defensively, Rodriguez. Joe, dominating uh, Hostos in the second half. Hostos okay. had no answer. You know, it's going to be interesting to see. This is her first year, Rodriguez. It's going to be interesting to see where she pops up in the senior ranks. There are a lot of CUNY schools that can use her services. She missed that free throw right there. A lot of schools might take a flyer on her. Of course, if everything uh, you know pans out the way that they would like it at their particular program, and she has the goods. Otherwise, that's a miss there. Three seconds to go. There's a miss. And a loose ball gotten to. They'll try to put it on the board, Hostos, and that that's made it. it. That made it. It counts for Turner, but the game oh, over, and the Lady Tigers of Queensboro win it 43-36. to 36. They had a very tough first half. 
they kind of went into the locker room like we said sized up what needed to take place and just came out and did it Sean they came out and they uh, really dominated the second half but here's the thing for about three minutes of that second half didn't look like it was going to happen they were sleepwalking again Hostos had a nine point lead as I stated right at the beginning 22 to 13 Tigers weren't doing anything and then it just the, 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 the switch flipped and that was it no, I think uh, I would credit this victory uh, principally to Keanu Jean Lewis Sabrina Rodriguez and Naisha Irby those three players generated a huge amount of steals they they stole the ball Joe 12 times during this game it was just incredible the amount of energy they did defensively and then went to convert those steals to points uh, That's right Keanu Jean Lewis leading them with 15 points tonight off the bench very nice job very nice job good stat keeping Sean. oh well hey and Rodriguez was right there hey hey Joe I'm, I'm you know give I'm Rodriguez learning from you man give Rodriguez his total yeah Rodriguez also with 14 points and, and she had eight steals today so and who what, else was before we go who else was important <laughs> in, who else was important not, on not, that scorecard I, I think Naisha Irby I, I don't her point total is not as significant I think she uh, ended up with about six points but her effort um, defensively and also rebounding was superior and on the host side the big girl Sherban she had a very good first half came alive down the end here tried to keep her team in it she had a very good performance on the whole yeah she did a good job uh, Christina Sherban and Jacqueline Awasika played well but it just Sherban wasn't enough. I had for 15 you had her for 15 tick 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 15 <laughs> all right there we go the Lady Tigers are still dominant in the community college ranks up you know at least to this point they will play a final here the big uh, uh, second week from the last of February, uh, one week before the end of February. That's what I'm looking for. And they will play it right here. We'll see if the Tigers are in it. They should be. They're playing well, and, and I've seen all the teams. It, they look very good right now. I, I don't see anybody right now getting in their way, to, at least to get to the championship, unless they totally fold. Stephanie Rodriguez coming right over here. Move our papers. We don't want any of the missing. <laughs> She has quick hands, that girl. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next time on QP and CUNY TV. We'll see you next time.